sprayed by our government. And this nanotechnology has been over time building its system into the human body, uh, possibly changing the genome structure, I don't know, building itself into the body. And as people get a certain level of infection and a certain length of time with this nanotechnology more gallons inside of them to build these structures then eventually they will come online one after another and I guess the computer could be sweeping and scanning for this I mean there are so many sources of, of external uh, electromagnetic radiation we're blanketed in microwave radiation from from cellular systems 3g uh, 4g it, it blankets the world more than half the earth population has a cell phone so the coverage blankets almost every populated area of the world which means we're bathed in this constantly modulating field of microwave radiation now it is true that the CDMA and TDMA uh, multiple division access um, systems that are used to to put multiple conversations into one data stream and break them apart again that these codecs in and of themselves the way they have been constructed can be used by simply slipping some bits around in the bit stream to modulate a particular rhythm uh, of microwave pulses that could be used for brainwave entrainment or active denial system uh, befuddling, befogging the brain with pulsed microwaves. Now we know this is a fact because we've seen these weapons in operation and, and if you google them, you know, active denial system, you'll see plenty of pictures of the government showing you this. However, these, these, excuse me, these pulsed microwave modulations can also be emanating from other sources, from satellite television, from cellular phones. Um, in fact, if you were uh, serious about global mind control, you would even, well, I gotta get a tripod, you would even be able to modulate the power grid itself to uh, cause uh, befuddlement and action. This is, this is really ridiculous. Um, I'm going to have to find a much better way of, of doing this. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, uh, you can see the kind of things that are, are going through my mind. Uh, a lot of it sounds like a paranoid schizophrenia. However, this is not the case. Um, it's that I'm highly intelligent and that I have been targeted, tortured, drugged, gang-stalked, followed, poisoned, irradiated. I've had uh, strange biological entities shooting out of my body. I've had... I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I've been coated in smart dust. I've been irradiated with electromagnetic energy and microwaves and laser beams and God knows what else they've done to us. They drugged us every day with aerosolized, weaponized, hallucinogenic drugs and misted our room with chemtrail chemicals to see in an accelerated version of what happens to everybody else. And they're using the remote neural connectivity, you know, to control our minds. Oh, here's how it works. This inner dialogue, when you're thinking to yourself, there's a voice in your head that talks to you, and it's your voice, it's the voice in your mind. And you're used to that voice because you've been talking with it your whole life. However, with remote neural connectivity, that voice can be emanated, excuse me, imitated, and come from an external source. In other words, sometimes your thoughts may not be your own. Sometimes the choices you make based on those thoughts and your emotional state behind those thoughts may be influenced externally. How else can I say it? The reason I know this is because they told me, sometimes your thoughts aren't your own. And, and I didn't want to believe that for a while. And then one day I was watching He-Man 
and somebody yelled in my head, fucking He-Man, I hate that show, it is so fucking gay. And of course, then they proceeded to hack my system so that I could no longer watch He-Man on Hulu for about three months. But it dawned on me in that instant 